Hello and welcome to the channel. This is not one of my normal run of the mill videos, but this weekend sees the UK's Grand National Horse Race taking place. And I just thought I'd do a quick video um, about the race, a few tips of mine and some of the history. So the Grand National is held annually at Aintree Racecourse in Merseyside, bordering the city of Liverpool. It's run over four miles, two and a half furlongs, with the horses jumping 30 fences over two laps of the course. And it's the most valuable race in Europe with the 2017 race, the prize money was one million pounds. The race itself is very popular amongst many people who would not normally bet or even watch horse racing at other times of the year. And the course is run over fences much larger than those found on conventional national hunt tracks. Many of these fences, particularly Beaches Brook, the Chair and the Canal Turn, have become famous in their own right and combined with the distance of the race create what has been called the ultimate test of both horse and rider. An estimated five to six hundred million people from over 140 countries will watch the Grand National this coming weekend. The first official race of the Grand National was back in 1839. For three years during the First World War the event was held on land at Gatwick which is now Gatwick Airport as Aintree had been commandeered by the War Office. In 1916 the race was called the Racecourse Association Steeplechase and then in 1917 and 1918 it was called the War National Steeplechase. Although the Grand National was run as normal during 1940 as were most other major horse racing events throughout the world, commandeering of Aintree Racecourse meant that the National was put on hold from 1941 until 1945. Recommencing in 1946 it was run on a Friday and then from 1947 it was moved to the Saturday. And the reason for this was that the Home Secretary at the time thought it would make it more easier for people of a working class nature to watch the race and from then on it's always been held on a Saturday. Other notable years was 1967, Foynhaven was the horse. In that race at the 23rd fence, most of the horses were either hampered or dismounted and that allowed rank outsider Foynaven to win at odds of 100 to 1. And in 1956, the horse Devon Lock, owned by Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, had cleared the final fence and was at least five lengths in front of a horse called ESB. And then 40 yards from what would have been the inevitable winner, for some reason it, it jumped what they call a fake fence it, it must have seen a shadow and it jumped and just belly flopped onto the floor and this left the horse ESB to cross the winning line and took the race was first in the 1970s the Grand National was dominated by one horse the most famous horse of all Red Rum he won it in 1973 74 and 1977 and the two years in between that, 1975 and 1976, Red Rum finished second. Two years before the 1981 Grand National, jockey Bob Champion was diagnosed with cancer and was given literally months to live. But by 1981, he had recovered and was past fit to ride a horse called Aldeniti. Now, Aldeniti had his own misfortunes. This was a horse deprived of his youth and suffered from chronic leg problems and despite a poor start to the race the pair of them went on to win by four and a half lengths. Bob Champion and Aldeniti were instantly propelled to celebrity status and within two years their story had been recreated into a film Champions starring John Hurt. The 1993 race was called the race that never was and this all happened because while on the starters orders one horse was tangled in the starting tape. A false start was ordered, but because of poor communication, 30 of the 39 runners carried on the race. Now, court officials tried to stop the race by waving red flags, but a lot of the jockeys thought that these were people on the course, some animal rights people, some protesters, and they just carried on regardless. As the race went on, more and more jockeys began to realize that this was a void race. Seven horses and jockeys finished the race and the first horse past the post was S.N.S. ridden by John White and trained by Jenny Pittman. And Jenny Pittman herself was the first woman to train a Grand National winner, Corbiere, in 1983. 
Geraldine Rees was the first female jockey to complete the course on a horse called Cheers in 1982, whilst Katie Walsh was the first female jockey to earn a placed finish. She finished third on a horse called Seabass in 2012. First female to actually win the Grand National was Rachel Blackmore on Manila Times in 2021. In 1997, the race was postponed on the Saturday because the police had received two coded bomb threats. The race course was closed off. Everyone was asked to leave. Jockeys, trainers, 60,000 spectators. All the vehicles, all their cars were kept in the car parks of the race course over the weekend. So with that, you had some 20,000 people without their vehicles, without their cars over the weekend. Um, and with limited accommodation, local residents put them up. And this prompted um, the tabloids to have headlines like, we'll fight them on the beaches, referring to Beaches Brook and Winston Churchill's wartime speech. The race was eventually run on the Monday and 20,000 free tickets were given out for people to enter. Now on to the fences. One of the most famous is Beecher's Brook, and this was named after Captain Beecher. Um, he fell at that fence in the first Grand National, and he took shelter in a little brook as all the other horses funded over, and so it was named Beecher's Brook. And then you've got the canal turn, which is fence eight, and of course, second time round becomes fence 24. Now this fence on landing takes a sharp 90 degree turn to the left and it wasn't uncommon for horses to carry on and end up in the Leeds and Liverpool Canal that ran nearby. And then you've got Valentine's. Now Valentine's, this fence before it became Valentine's was called the Second Brook. It was renamed Valentine's Brook after a horse called Valentine reputedly jumped the fence with its hind legs first back in 1840. And then you've got the water jump. And this was originally, back in the early days, a stone wall. Another fence is known as the chair. And the reason it's known as the chair is because, again, in the early days. On the second lap, one of the judges sat there and he was called the distance judge. And what he would do is he would record down on paper as each horse passed and if that horse passed at a greater distance it was classed as a non-finisher. Uh, that practice stopped in the 1850s uh, but to this day it's still known as the chair. Well I'm going to go on now to give you my three tips. Um, don't go put a mortgage on it please. Um, this is just I look at horse racing and with the national you could just get a pin and just close your eyes and just put it anywhere. Um, it is a race where it's chance, or well, chance luck and destiny, I suppose. Any horse could win it. I've seen races where there's been, you know, the favourite has been unseated or fell at the first or the second fence. So yeah, it's what you fancy, but what I look for, I look for what the ground's going to be like. Is it soft? Is it firm? Is it good to soft? Um, look if the horse suits that kind of ground. See what sort of weight that horse is carrying. Has it got a penalty because it's won a previous race somewhere and its weight goes up there's all sorts of things there'll be a list of horses and they won't declare until the 11th of april which is two days before the race so last year there was 40 runners this year there can't be any more than 34 runners and this was reduced down to 34 for safety reasons so come Thursday, Thursday afternoon, you'll have 34 declared runners. If for some reason after that time, two or three horses pull out for whatever reason, they won't be replaced. So if four horses pull out, you'll have 30 runners. So my three tips um, is Kitty's Light, another horse called Vanilla, V-A-N-I-L-L-I-E-R, and then another horse called Late Night Pass. I don't know what prices they are at the moment. Prices will change. Um, the more that people back them, they then become the favorite or the co-favorite or the second favorite and the price will shorten. Um, I will also look out for one that's running around 50 or 80 to one, one with a decent chance. Um, and the reason it's 50 to 80 to one is because the bookmakers are not making it favorite to win. 
you could easily get a 50, 60, 70, 80 to 1 horse being lucky, clearing the fences, staying out of trouble, um, just biding his time, not leading, just following the pack round. And as other things happen to other horses and riders, they pull up, they fall, they get unseated. That 50 to 1 shot romps home. So there we go. Well, as I say, not one of my normal videos. Um, if you're having a, a little flutter, don't be too mad. Have a little bet. Best of luck. And uh, we'll see you again on one of my more related um, narrowboat videos. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.